Welcome back. Today I'm going to tell you everything about the use of rear brake on track. I'm going to tell you how MotoGP riders use it to go faster and I'm also going to let you in on a secret that I actually never told anybody. Now for the rear brake settings, there is different setup for different riders. Some riders prefer it different ways. So there is the conventional right foot uh, pedal. We also have a possibility of using a scooter brake or we can use also the thumb brake. Now, scooter brake and thumb brake, they can be coupled with the pedal. So you can have both the pedal and the thumb brake or the pedal and the scooter brake. So I've got my teaching board over there. Love that board. Um, we're going to be using that in a bit because to look into the use of rear brake on track, we need to look at the bigger picture, exactly at what happens during the braking phase. So first, we're going to be looking at the straight braking phase. So this is where we shred the most speed. This is where the braking forces are their greatest. So when the GP riders get to their braking point, they do four things simultaneously. So they roll off the throttle, press the front brake, press the rear brake, and also downshift immediately. So I'm going to show you now on the board what it looks like on the data. So in that first phase, this is what it looks like. So we have here the forces. Every, every MotoGP rider is very similar. And then here you have the time or distance, same. So first thing, the gas. So 0%, uh, 100%. So we arrive in the straight, 100%. As soon as we hit the braking marker, the gas is just rolled off very quickly. And then for MotoGP riders, this is very fast. It's like absolutely to limit the, um, uh, the neutral phase. So the gas looks like that. Then we've got the front brake. So we take the front brake as soon as we release and then the front brake pressure comes up quite fast and then stays there at a maximum of about seven kilo, 12 bar in the system. Uh, that's maximum, it really depends on the corner. And then as we start tipping in the corner, this is the way it looks basically up until the end, really, really smooth up until the end. Now the gears, so it looks like that. We uh, say we are in sixth gear here. Now, as soon as we roll off, the fifth is gonna come down, sometime even closer than that. Fifth, fourth, third, second, let's say it's a second gear corner. So we're in second here, that's it, and stay in second. So the downshift happens really early, really on the limit of touching the limiter, staying high in the revs. The rear brake, so the rear brake for most riders is applied here for a little bit and then released. At that moment, that's when the leg comes out. Like say, for example, it's a right corner, the leg comes out. At this moment here, the engine brake strategy is gonna take over. When the engine brake strategy kicks in, the engine brake is slowing the rear wheel a lot. So this force is creating something that's called rear wheel slip. So this is basically the opposite of a power slide. So we're braking very hard, the engine brake is trying to stop the rear wheel, there is not a lot of contact in the rear, so the rear is slipping negatively, going much slower than the front wheel. This helps stop the bike, and at that moment the rear brake is not really needed, and it can create some other problems like locking the rear wheel, uh, it's a phase where there's not too much contact on the rear, so that's why many riders choose to do the leg dangle to benefit from the other advantages from the leg dangle because the engine brake is already acting as a rear brake. Second phase, tipping the bike in. So when you get to the corner, at some point you're gonna have to start like, trail braking and going into the corner. So at that point, some things happen. The first thing is that you start, we start to release the front brake uh, because obviously it's not possible to keep the same pressure as you start turning, you would just lock the front. So we start releasing the front brake. By releasing the front brake, this is transferring some load from the front tire because we're braking really hard when straight, the bike is like this. You start going in, release the front brake, it transfers weight to the rear. Now this transfer weight is gonna stop the tire slipping as much because we are regaining contact and it's gonna basically give a lot more grip to the rear tire. At the same moment, because you're not braking as hard, the G-forces are decreasing. So at that moment, it feels really easy and very natural to put your foot back on the footrest. And at that exact moment, it's also a really, really good moment where you can start rear braking because you regain contact, you regain grip, 
and at that moment the rear slip is decreasing so you really want to keep the bike slowing down so by applying some rear brake at that moment the bike can take it, the grip can take it, the rear tire can take it and so at that moment it makes a lot of sense starting using the, the, the rear brake so your leg was dangling, comes back on the peg and then you start braking to go into the corner so in that second phase when we tip the bike in the rear brake comes in as we tip the bike so here when we start releasing the brake, the front brake this is when we start turning basically so the load in the rear increase and then from that point on we have a rear, the rear brake coming back and actually quite often the rear brake will stay longer than the front brake just helping to finish the corner so most of us use the rear brake all the way into the corner until the apex until the moment where you start to reopen the throttle This makes a big difference and it also takes a bit of load off the front because at that moment we are loading the front a lot, we've got some leaning so we're really on the limit with the front, it's the moment where you can actually close the front and crash. So by applying the rear brake it sits the back down a little bit and it just, it just everything feels a bit better. Number three, corner exit. Now some riders use it but nowadays with the wings, the front wings, this helps a lot to keep some contact on the front. So with a MotoGP bike, I don't feel there is many places where it's relevant to use it. Personally, I never use the rear brake on Kono Exit. Mm. So you're probably thinking, this is really complicated and hard to then apply on the track. So I'm going to tell you now this uh, secret that I've got. And I, I actually never told anybody, just the people that work with me know about it. Um, it's not that simple you don't I mean rear brake has got actually a very little effect especially on superbikes with MotoGP it's really important to use it because of the amount of grip that we get from the rear tire and because of the the way the, the bikes are and, and everything is just extreme so even little inputs can make a big difference but for example in superbike I personally I'm not a big fan of the rear brake um, I won the world title in 2014 without touching the rear brake not even one time during the season I never touched it I'm not sure why I just don't feel comfortable with it now in MotoGP I have to use it now because it's a it's a main part it's a main technique that helps getting the lap times but in super bikes I, I never used it I don't know if it's my long legs or I just don't feel comfortable braking with the rear brake so <laughs> not rear braking means that doesn't mean that you can't go fast that's that's what i'm trying to say and i think the point here is that you have to do whatever feels comfortable um, one thing that is very important with super bikes and with four strokes in general is that if you downshift early and use the high rev of your engine on 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 the braking phase you will get a lot of engine brake and this effect is going to help you stop tremendously so, I mean, if you feel comfortable rear braking, it's great. And try and improve your technique and follow the guidance that, uh, that I've just given you. But if you don't feel like it's something comfortable, if you feel like you're, you, you're just not happy about it, or if you feel like it's, you're just thinking about it too much and it's just ruining your day, ruining your track day because you just can't get it right, I would say don't bother too much about it. Um, last year in Suzuka, I was leading the first hour of the race, not touched the rear brake once. Now, if you're not a fan of the rear brake and you prefer not to use it or use it very little, the best advice I can give you, and this I've seen in all those videos that I've, that I've watched recently of you guys sending me your videos, the, and, and, and not many people do it, it's really, really important to downshift early. With a four stroke, as soon as you roll off the throttle, you must downshift. And if you do that, you can get away with not touching the rear brake because your engine brake is going to help you stop like the, the the effect of it is absolutely massive so you must try and do that if you let the bike run on do your downshift late on like a low rev like torque you, this this is actually pushing you it's not helping you at all it's pushing you into the corner and you can't close your corner so try and do that i mean even if you use the rear brake this is really important to do but this is a very very common mistake i've, I've seen uh, in all the videos I've been watching. So yeah, that's my advice of the day. Downshift early, guys. Right, I hope you enjoy this and I'll see you soon.